Welcome to the Ministers Papers. Today we're going to be talking about painting up that Space Wolves Terminator Captain. Check it out! Alrighty, welcome back. Okay, so time to prime this up with some Stino Res, my favorite primer through an airbrush. I'm using Stino Res Black with just a little bit of airbrush thinner. I do like using airbrush thinner with my Stino Res, but that's my personal preference. You can do it any way you'd like to. Uh, for me, less tip dry is down the road when I do that. All right, so next up, it's time for the highlights. We're gonna start with the power sword over here. I'm using a white just to bring up the extreme highlights because I know I want that glowing, so I'm gonna hit that glowing. I'm also doing zenithal highlighting, which I'm coming up from the top. Now, I work in sub-assemblies, and I love doing things in sub-assemblies because then I can actually fit my paintbrush into areas in which I normally wouldn't be able to fit if I completely build the model. But when doing sub-assemblies, you always have to keep in mind where the top, when doing sub-assemblies and zenithal highlighting, you need to know where the top of the miniature, high noon, or wherever the light source you're creating, uh, where it's gonna be the brightest. And always keep that in mind as you go through each one of the components, because you want the highest point to actually be brighter than everything else. Already time for some heavy blue gray. And I threw some heavy blue gray, uh, just a tint the models in between the, it's at a 45 degree angle to tint and to better the transition between that highest highlight, the white, and the darkest um, shadow, which is the black in which we primed it in. So you always have to keep that. This is an intermediary color. So we're doing top, the brightest, mid-tone, 45 degree angle, which is the heavy blue gray, and then bottom would be the black in which we um <clears throat> prime the miniature in. Alrighty, so next up we're gonna do some werewolf gray, and I do like to use werewolf gray from Bad Badger Minotaur just to, to give it that blue. Now a lot of people, there are some people that don't like the blue, and that's cool if you don't like that blue, that Space Wolves blue, but I do, you know, and I really do like the color, so uh, I wanna create that color, and instead of just, you know, throwing on my own color, um, I do it this way. Now you can throw on any colors you want, ultimately if you have these models and you're building them, they're your models models you do whatever you want with them you know period you know but um this is mine this is my color this is a uh, plain old vanilla when it comes to that true color when it comes to my space wolves and i do like it and this is how i achieve it all right so next up i'm gonna hit game color black and then what i do is whenever i have something that's going to be metallic or something like that i want to bring it to to black first then to bring it into that metallic because then it'll have like you know when it comes to like something like steel or something like that there's like a black undertone to it so i want that black undertone to actually shine through now if i'm going to do a gold piece a uh, metallic gold piece then i would paint it brown that's right paint it brown because you know gold has that brown quality to it that yellowish brown on that scale so if you paint it brown that's going to show you is through in the deepest shadows um so it makes it easier to come up to a highlight and have actually a gradient. So, and I do like to, to play around with metallics and have under shading. That's what this is, under shading. So you're putting that. Uh, there's also pieces between the armor that I do like to do black, uh, between the ceramite uh, armor bits. Um, there are those flexible bits. All right, so time for charred brown. Again, doing brown on any place that's going to be goldish, so really being that. I like charred brown. I also put charred brown on anything that's gonna be bone because I do want to have the deepest shadows to be a brown when it comes to uh, bone or teeth or anything like that. All right, next up, some bone white. Now this is one color that I completely, almost completely finished the bottle of, uh, and that's out of all my paints. This is the one that I think I use the most, but then again, in all fairness, I do have a Death uh, Nagash Army, Legion Nagash Army, and um, I do use a lot of bone white when it comes to creating those. Although I haven't done it in a long time. The only thing I've done out of the entire set is Malignants, and I do have the Battle Force box and, and the Skeleton 
horde box and I have I, mean, I just have all the more tarks except for one I have to uh, I have a lot of stuff <laughs> which I have to get painted of course my gosh uh, is coming up so a lot of bone is going to be used all right Agrax Earthshade Agrax Earthshade and all I'm doing is, is I'm just trying to I'm going from that charred brown and I'm trying to get a transition between the charred brown now it's much easier to do with an airbrush you can do it with a um, a paintbrush it just takes a long time to glaze in those through and then sometimes I use glaze medium with the shades it takes just forever I could use just a regular paint I don't know why I didn't but that's just my personal thing that I did there alrighty so yeah bringing it down bringing it down uh, and then bringing it back up again that is what I am doing alrighty so I think the fur looks great. I'm trying to have that transition that I actually have when it comes to um, all my Fenris and Wolves, like the tutorial that I've done in the past. So I do want that fur to be uniform throughout. Now, I never like to build the same model. If I do, I would change the fur. That'd be one thing that I'd, I'd do, but mm, I kind of lean away from that. All right, some red game ink time. And I really am adding that with my red paint. I'm using Carmine Red, but you can use any red you want to. Just any red that really, really pops, I put some ink to really, really saturate that color. I do like the seals being very bright, very noticeable, especially because I want to draw your eye to it. And the reason why I want to draw your eye to it is because I'm going to put a lot of work into the scrolling of it. And I want you to kind of look at all the work that I've done. If you notice all that now time for the scrolling micron pens are amazing. I'm using a 0.005. This is a hobby kind of a cheat that you want to do if you want complete control. Now the thing about these pens is that you don't have like the plasticity or the, the, the movement of a, of a brush and you don't have to worry about about how much ink is going through. Yes, yeah, so you're using ink and you have complete control. Okay, cold gray now. Uh, and I'm doing various items in cold gray and those are the stone bits. I'm starting out with a base coat of stone gray and I wanna paint everything on the legs before I start you know, putting everything else. Cause you know, when it comes to these uh, space walls, you, you do work in layers uh, when you're building the model because there are things in the background, things in the foreground. You wanna get those background bits first. Okay, time for some none oil I'm doing none oil to separate the parchment in between I'm using none oil instead of seraphon sepia because I'm using seraphon sepia in the bones so I don't want you know to confuse the two I want the paper to seem like paper and the bone to seem like bone so I'm using different colors on each just to have that okay and yeah it's very important when you have both of them together Okay, time for some Seraphon Sepia. And what I'm doing is just getting the shadows, and that's it. That's pretty much it. Hitting the shadows when it comes to the parchment as it's going down. And look, it really looks nice. I'm my opinion anyway. I think it really looks great. Um, and you can achieve this definitely. Uh, it just takes a little bit of patience and step by step by doing it. All right, bootstrap leather. I really like this. Recently, I've uh, dumped my bootstrap leather and I just knocked it over because I didn't follow my own advice and poster tack it to something. Um, and I should have, to be honest with you. Um, like the color, although I do have the Fantasy and Cream sets uh, Steam and Punk, which they do have a tutorial for leather, and I do want to try that out. I think when we one of these days a cape that's going to come out is going to be leather. Speaking of the leather, I have some leather brown when it come when it has a uh, Vallejo uh, game color I do have a lot of different leather colors they have a different feel to it uh, again I like to um I like to have different colors uh, represent leather, putting scratches in there, going from shadow to light, and you know, it just really works to a good effect when you are doing things like this to have a dimension. All right, time for that bone white, one of my favorite colors. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say favorite, I would say more often used color. Um, and <laughs> hitting back, just getting, that is the tip of the leather belt, just getting that like edge highlighting bits. Again, having different colors and just putting a little dot onto it that's it just putting dots very simple all right wolf gray wolf gray time that's right i'm switching up paints here uh some wolf gray and the wolf gray is a lot lighter so i'm getting the edge highlights for those uh stone bits right there and using the side of the brush not the tip of the brush to get that uh and just a little bit goes a long long way sometimes i put some fluid in there just to get it flown but you know it doesn't take much to do some edge highlighting all right some flat flush 
retard. That's right. I go flat flush on the knee because I am going to paint that yellow and I want a good base there. And, you know, paints are translucent by nature. So, you know, if you have a lot of coverage, you're usually going to show up a lot of uh, brush strokes in there. Uh, that's typically the pattern, although, you know, every rule has an uh, exception. I'm sure, even this one. So, nice flesh tone here. I'm going to go with a model called Yellow. Uh, recently, I bought some Citadel Yellow. It seems to work really, really well when it comes to yellow. And I think my yellow, I don't know, I think it's possessed or something because it's just so difficult to work with that model color yellow that I have. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I got a bad batch or something. I don't know what's going on. Um, but there you go. I got that. Now, uh, coming in with that Micron pen again. 0 0.005 pen and what I am doing here is I am just etching the points of where I want this jigsaw pattern to go. So I'm just creating a t uh, triangle putting dots right on the top and then on the sides and then what I'm going to do is I'm putting it connecting the dots and that's all I'm doing. If you've ever played connect the dots that's all this is. So connecting the dots and one and believe me I exhale when I do this because uh, I get nervous. Two, okay there you go I'm connecting dots. All right, once you have the pattern done, uh, you're gonna hit some black. And what you're gonna do is just, tr you know, color. That's all you're doing, you know. And if you've liked coloring with coloring books in the past, that is all you're doing right here. Just getting something with a very fine tip and just going over uh, what you just, you know, drew, basically. Um, just be very careful at this point. It's not insanely difficult to do. Um, I, you will not get them exactly even because we're human, but, you know, you will get them. So, you know, it just takes time. And if it's too short, you can long, you can elongate it just by adding a little line to it, thickening it, thick, making it more thick. And that's pretty much it. You know, it doesn't take too, too much uh, when it comes to that. And I'm thinking, Charlie, Mr. Schultz, you would know <laughs> about who I'm speaking about. Um, Lucy would too. All right. So, <laughs> nab around. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, all right, so time to go into the little details with the bones and stuff like that. I'm um, with the um, trying to wash some things out uh, when it comes to those metals. Now, time for gold and pink burl, uh, burnt metal. And I like to mix my metallics. Uh, just got to have a different flavor to it. You know, you want the gold, but you want it kind of shiny on the bright side. So mix that into it. If not, you can throw an ink into it and change the color of it. Like, you could play around with these metallics. And I do like model metal color. They seem to be the best ones on the market. All right. Now time for some black. That's right. We could do some black. And yes, we finally are done with the legs. And now what we're doing is we're going to do the chest plate. So we do the chest plate and we get all this done. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to attach those two pieces and oh happy day that's right uh it would be happy when that happens right there so i'm painting those black because i'm not doing non-metallic metal now if i was doing non-metallic metal i would paint those brown so you know brown there it is heavy gold brown that's what i start with and then do a peanut butter and all this other good stuff uh bring it all the way up to white but since this is going to be metallic metal i am just going to hit it up with a brown um to be honest, can I go straight brown with this? Yeah, I could have gone straight brown with this. I don't even know why I put the black in there. It's just something I do with my metallics, I guess. Uh, and hitting the brown, and now I'm going to get some uh, some charred brown. And getting that skull on the bottom right there. Um, and then some heavy gold brown. This is extra opaque because that's what I had on hand. And there you go, just getting those bone bits right there. All right. Um, after which, just kind of get all the bone bits. All the bone bits, you want to go into a brown spectrum before you hit that bone white into it. So this way the recesses and the shadows can be that brown. Okay, I dropped something, which was bone white. That's right. Again, with that bone white, trying to get the edges and stuff like that. Now, if you really want to do an edge highlight with this, after the bone white, you can go pure white and just get like the bottom ridges of the, the skull, the eyes, the top of the eyebrow, and just hit it on the areas that's going to hit the light the most, the absolute most. But you want to go very, very sparingly with that if you want to. Seraphon Sempia, I'm going to wash this down just to unite it. And, you know, I rarely do complete washes. 
Um, I usually just shade that down or add that to a paint, but this time, eh, why not? I like the wash. I'm just throwing it in there, getting all lazy with it. <laughs> uh, and sometimes I do. Sometimes I just get lazy with it. I don't know. This is not going to be for competition, so I'm like, it's going to be for the table. This is a good tabletop quality. Guess what paint I'm using next? That's right. You don't ever, 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 ever end the painting process on the shade. You do want to highlight that shade and get rid of some of that shade so you can still have all those nice high bright highlights and have some kind of control instead of going with your wash and just slapping it on there. Um, that always makes me leery every time I, I, I do that now. Uh, all right, <laughs> speaking of wash, Sarapon Sepia is going in and just darkening the edge, the highest edge of each bone. Just putting a dot of uh, Sarapon Sepia on the edge of each bone. And that's gonna give a transition from the dark all the way to the light um, when it comes to bones itself. All right, next up, some gold. Time for some gold and some paint burnt, um, pale burnt metal. I always have trouble saying that. I don't know why. Uh, I'm doing that there on the bottom. Uh, and what I'm gonna do with the highest bits, I'm gonna go straight gold with it, I think. Yeah, and then there it is. That is some nice shiny stuff right there. And um, hitting straight gold on the top just to have a different color on there. Uh, and wow, you know, if you look at this, what a great metal color that is. It really is. Um, there's the gold. Going for the gold and jet exhaust. Now this is the lower uh, end of the spectrum. I'm just trying to create some shadows. Uh, doing some highlights with that. Just getting on the edges of the, of the wings itself, the Aquila. Because uh, you always want to put in some kind of shadow and then the, the highest highlight. And I'm sorry for having this off screen. <laughs> no idea. It was going on with that one. All right, switch on to the next one. Time for the hair dryer. Yes, a hair dryer. And hair dryers are, are great. Now, you shouldn't do that over your wet palette, which I do. I don't know why I did that, but <laughs> all right, I dried things up anyway because that metal color, yeah, it takes a while to dry. So there you go. A little hair dryer is to speed up the process. Alrighty, so this is a Masterson's wet palette. I used to have a regular wet palette to make myself, but this is absolutely a dream to work with. And for like the 12 bucks that I spent on it, it's so worth it. You, know, you put water on the sponge itself, you throw away the papers that come with it, and you get yourself some parchment paper. I do like parchment paper that actually has lines and grids on it because I know how many uh, grids to cut. It makes it easier for me. All right, some intense red, and they're not lying when they say intense red because that sucker is intense. And and what I'm doing is getting that gemstone right there in the middle and really want to make it pop out. That's what I'm trying to do, making it pop. And you know, when you're painting with inks, you, I mean, that is about pure pigment as you could possibly get in my, in my uh, experience. All right, some dead white. Some dead white, I'm doing an edge highlights onto those uh, gem right there to really make it do it pop. Now, any of these stages, you, you can actually uh, not do if you don't want to. You know, you can just paint it red. Uh, but the edge highlights really taking it to the next step. And I'm all about trying to take my painting to the next step. There you go. It looks beautiful. I mean, that is gorgeous, in um, my opinion, of course. Um, some Vallejo game black. All right, so now I'm just doing the shoulder wires here. Again, painting sub-assemblies, that's right. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with that at first, and then I wanted to go uh, and do some metallic metal. And I'm just doing some like pink or pale burnt metal onto that side um, connector hose, I guess. Um, there it is. And I mixed that pink or burnt metal with some jet exhaust just to give a darker uh, tone to it. Um, so I'm just getting the raised edges. I'm not trying to get all the, the shadows. Now, if you do get some paint in the shadow, that's okay. You just paint some black right in the shadow and you can go back and forth until you get it right. All right, some mummy. Ooh, mummy. Time for an airbrush because I like to use all my tools at my um, disposal. And I'm just doing some mummy, just like I did the Fenris and Wolves. Again, keeping that same type of color spectrum. So this way, um, all of my army would have some uniformity within it. Okay, um, I've got to get some ancient bone. Ancient bone, ancient bone. All right, anyway, some ancient bone. And there it goes, gonna go onto the, the edges right there. Uh, for, so from mummy to ancient bone. 
I'm getting that little transition right there. Just a little building up the gradient very slowly. Uh, yep, and then some Agrax Earthshade right there on top, darken everything up. That's right. Uh, and I'm brushing it on. See, I'm using the airbrush for very little uh, when it comes to this stuff. Like, I try to use it as sparingly as possible. There are times you go back and forth from airbrush to um, your brush. Now, what happens if you don't have an airbrush? Well, this can be done. It just takes a long, 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 long time. And I value my time. My time is money. And if I'm going to spend 10 hours on getting the same effect, then it's just not going to happen. If I'm going to spend five seconds getting the same effect, then you sure is money that I am going to put my money where my mouth is, not buy new armies, not buy new models, and get myself an airbrush to make my life a lot easier. All right, some black for the eyes and the nose, just to get that in there. I just got complimented on this model this weekend, actually. People really, really love this uh, captain. And they looked at the fur and they're like, wow, that's pretty amazing. And I'm like, oh, wow, um, like, um, I'm honored, thank you. Some dead white now, some dead white. And now I'm just gonna get into the uh, side there, trying to get some side so the ice way it leaves the pupil left. There you go, there you go, that's a, that's a good Rufy. He's dead, so I don't know. I don't know how accurate I wanted to go with the eyes. Like I could put it like a dot or just leave it black with the white white pupils, which look weird. I like weird. All right, but we're gonna do some ink yellow now. Ink some ink yellow, and we're gonna yellow up those eyes. There it is. So it's gonna have a yellow pupil with black eyes. And the reason it's having black eyes, in my opinion, is that it's a Fenris and Wolves and it died. So there you go. Has black. I, was, I don't know how that works, but it just did. Okay. Um, alrighty, some red. Intense red. All right, this is really, really, really diluted. Now, I'm not diluting it with any kind of glaze medium or anything like that because intensity is amazing uh, when diluting. You can just dilute it straight with water. It has something to do with the medium that they're using. So I just dilute it heavily with water and just slightly get that red on the tips. Now for some bone white on the nails. That's right, I feel like a expert wolf manicurist here. Okay, again, the same process that I did on the Fenris and Wolves I'm doing on this as well, which was very, very simple. Um, it says like four colors with a couple of shades, and there you go. <laughs> Alrighty, speaking of which, I'm gonna try some sepia, but this time I'm gonna try some FW inks to see how that works out. And what I'm doing is I am just creating uh, the shadows in between the nails and using the FW ink for that, just to try it out because I'm still experimenting with FW ink, so I'm trying to get used to them. And I would love to use that more uh, to to a good effect. All right, so some black. Now we're gonna do a shoulder sponsor right there. Just trying to get some black in beat on the bottom right there. Um, this is gonna be a metal little piece that hangs out, and that's fine. There's gonna be bone on that uh, sponsor too. So on the sponson itself on the on the actual symbol it's going to be bone so we're gonna go switch over to some charred bone that's right some charred bone and some charred bone as a base and i get that over here um this paint job for this terminator became out more elaborate uh than my other ones because i wanted to get into detail on every little thing that i did and there was a lot to it when it comes to terminators now to me if it's a smaller squad then i'll put more attention into the detail of it uh all right some heavy gold brown um was that heavy brown so heavy brown just to bring that up especially when you're doing a large area of um uh, bone you gotta want to bring it up gradually and have more steps to it than if you have just like a small little skull somewhere uh the smaller it is the less you know you're gonna notice all these little details and the bigger it is you gonna have more details so you want to kind of get that there all right some bone white surprising surprise all right some bone white uh, and you want to kind of dilute that so this way it's not, you know, crazy getting into the details and you don't want to obliterate all the shadows, the nice shadows that you made. So you kind of want to paint over it. Uh, you will be washing this as well, so, you know, you don't have to worry too, too, too much. All right, so just taking your time and going over the raised areas only, you're going to wash that now. Uh, Serapon Sepia is going to wash it. I like the bone color that it leaves when you hit the Serapon Sepia. Sometimes I use a... a oil wash but uh i don't i didn't use it this time um 
No, no, I had several pawns at beyond on hand, so I said, let me just go for it. And uh, a lot of different ways to achieve the same effect. Okay, so time for the face. Now, faces give a lot of people trouble. See, faces have given me trouble in the past, you know, as well. So I can say that it's not, uh, it's the easiest thing in the world to do, only because there's so many things there. But the thing about this guy is that he has a patch, so you only have to paint one eye. <laughs> None of this getting the eyes to match and all this other stuff. You don't have to worry about it looking too, too derpy. So all about the eyes is you're gonna see the hand position right there, right? So I'm grasping at one end, I'm tucking my elbows in, and I have my other finger resting on the clock the caulking and I'm using a very little amount of paint and I'm limited in my motion. Look how limited my motion is because I'm locking my hands together. I'm putting my finger on the caulk. You see that? See that hand position right there? That locks me in. That's what I do when I want to get control over my, uh, my paintbrush. All right, next up some Arbuckles Brown. Brown, I like saying brown, I don't know why. Um, and what you're gonna do is hit the, the shadows with that. It's like a natural kind of purple in there. And you know, these guys are out in the cold all the time. I would imagine that their face would be like, you know, I mean, there are no other space marines, but if there weren't, they'd be frostbitten off. But um, I don't know, I have that purple there. Okay, now for some black. I'm going for the black again. Uh, we have more pieces for the ceramite armor, for the Terminator armor. Um, and we're painting the gun black as well. So just getting the gun black and then getting the ceramite armor in between black and you know just getting all the areas black that we need to. Again, sub some blues in the house. Some bootstrap leather leather. I do like that bootstrap leather on P3. Um, it's sad that I knocked it over because I'm gonna run out. And I just asked uh, my local game store if they just sold the bootstrap leather and they're like, Boop, you could have to buy the pack. And I'm like, derp, no. Okay, so <laughs> I told them what had happened. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so some base yellow from Stano Res and I'm painting that on. I wanna see how I can get that on. Uh, just trying it out for to paint something yellow. So I wanted to see how the primer is. And the reason why I'm using primer instead of regular paint is because it's self-leveling, so I don't have to worry about chunkiness, which is my problem when it comes to painting yellow. All right, there goes the evil yellow, flat yellow. I think this is evil because of mine. But you notice how everything is flat, and then I turn out to this yellow, and it's like all chunky monkey, I don't know. That's for like 20 billion layers of it. I will, I will get a yellow that I'm happy with. Uh, another YouTuber um, actually did a yellow tutorial, um, Kujo painting, and I'm gonna see if I can follow that recipe next time I do yellow and see if it works out to, to a good effect. But I'm gonna keep working at it until I get it. And that's all, that's all this painting journey is. Just keep working at something you think is impossible until you get it because other humans have done it. So you can do it as well, it's not impossible. All right, so there it is. Now for some gold gold and i'm gonna mix it in with some pale burnt metal metal i keep saying that wrong i don't know why all right so and i'm getting that little wolfy symbol oh look at the little wolfy wolfy that's right I'm getting a little wolfy symbol in there uh painted up gold using a metallic gold um, for my regular infantry, I use my metallic metal, at least I tried, it took me forever, so I'm, I was done with it taking me forever, so I'm using metallics now. Alrighty, so time for some white, and hitting that little tip there with the, the edge highlighting on this whole thing, and I love edge highlighting guns, I'm getting better at the edge highlighting because of all the amount that I'm doing on it. Again, you're using the edge of the brush instead of the tip of the brush, and you're just getting the edges of the gun. All right, time for some base yellow as well. We're gonna do that yellow again. Uh, since it worked so well on the gun, I figured, hey, why not do the shoulder pad with the do? All right, so again, using that, uh, I can, I don't have to thin it out too, too much, and I can just go over the area uh, and it took a while to get through that, but I got through it. Again, with the flat yellow. All right, so flat yellow. Again, hitting the spots. Um, 
Now it takes me a while to get through one of these models done, especially the Terminator and the leader. I wanted to put a lot of extra time into this leader than I did all the other ones. Uh, the, all, all the other ones came together fairly quick. This had a lot more detail into it and I really wanted to bring it out. All right, now I'm going to intense yellow. I regret doing this because it's like brighter than every other one that I've ever painted because they're not lying when they're saying intense yellow. Should have cut that down with something. I think I put it into the flat yellow, but I don't know. It just it just is, you know, uh, experimenting, right? And then here's the thing, I make a lot of mistakes and that's okay, it's okay. Okay, so time to do the power sword. Uh, this one I learned a long time ago. When I say a long time ago, I would say about two years ago when I started painting um, again. Uh, yep, about two years ago when I started painting again with minis, this is what I learned up and I think I got from uh, Lester Burley, I think that's where I got it, or something like that. All right, so just hitting and getting the blue areas up. Now, while you see me do this, I do wanted to tell you a little bit about space wars in general. In the Age of War, where the galaxy burns and the Imperium is assailed from every side, the space marines are mankind's last hope for survival. The space wolves are one of the first and mightiest chapters of the Adeptus Astartes and live to deliver the Allfather's wrath with axe and bolt gun. Forged from a race of ferocious, ferocious warriors raised in the death world of Fenris, the Space Wolves are deadly adversaries. Ten millennia of war has seen them win victories uncounted and earn the reputation for uncompromising determination, courage, and sacrifice. Now, the Primarch of the Space Wolves was Lehman Russ, which I really hope they bring out a Lehman Russ model. I would flip my lipid if that were to happen, uh, really. All right, so uh, long after their gene sire passed into legend, his sons continued to fight in his name on the name of the Primogenor's vow to defend humanity against any and all of its enemies. In battle, surrounded by packs of their howling warriors' kinsmen, the sons of Russ are all but unstoppable. The heroes of the Space Wolves are among the mightiest in the galaxies, and they lead armies of ferocious warriors and deadly vehicles into battle. That's right, Space Wolves are a la bomb of thought. There are over a thousand chapters of Space Marines that maintain a long, age-long vigil against the enemies of mankind. The Space Wolves are one of the greatest of these chapters. Their name and honors known throughout the galaxies as one of the original 20 Space Marine legions. The Space Wolves were founded by the Emperor himself 10,000 years ago. The legions were created to take part of the Great Crusade, the Emperor's conquest of the galaxy that established the Imperium as it is today. Before the Great Crusade, Terra had endured thousands of years of isolation whilst impenetrable warp storms seething and howling through the western part of the galaxy. Even the Emperor was trapped upon Terra with a warped tumult and could do little, little than scarce, skewer humanity's birth planet and prepare his army for the reconquest to come. Without the Emperor to guide them through this terrible age, the rest of human worlds throughout the galaxies were helpless against the predations of aliens and the dread creatures of the war. One by one, they fell into anarchy and despair. Humanity, it seemed, was doomed. And then the space wolves came by and kicked some blood! Alright, I mean, I just I just cut off like so much history right there, but it was a good introduction, wasn't it? Well, I just wanted to talk about Space Wolves and how awesome they are. They are ferocious and known throughout the galaxy for kicking butt and doing acts of heroism. And that's enough for me. The Vikings in a bottle. <laughs> or maybe not in a bottle, but there you go. <laughs> they do like their mead. Anywho, let's get back to painting this. There is the power sword complete. And we're going to get into some dead white. And this is just the emblem on top of his backpack. Uh, and I'm just doing some edge lighting, edge highlighting on the wolf right there. I did paint the emblems around that in the gold. So that'll have that. And um, 
Yeah, it looks all shiny and new. All shiny and new. All right, so here I'm making a hot mess. No, no, no. I'm just taking some water and some PVA glue or some white glue, and I'm just spreading it out, spreading it out, spreading it out. Right, and then I gotta take some uh, some caulking in which I, uh, I kind of like cut up. And then I'm putting all the bases on caulking for this simple reason is I kind of just want to um, have them higher so when I put the primary Marines into the army, it doesn't look like these are the small guys. You know, everybody's about the same height. Now I put this on their poster tack. I put the Space Marine on with poster tack. So this way I know exactly where to put the um, caulking. And then I get my basing material. I'm gonna put that on as well. Now, since then, I've, I've you know I've gotten some skulls, and I'm gonna put those on in just a bit. Now, this is just road gravel that I got on the side of the road. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm running a little low, so I'm just gonna go over to uh, I'm gonna just walk with my wife one day in the afternoon, and uh, we're just gonna go and pick up some road gravel. Yeah, because that's you know I, I take my wife on the best places. We go on the best dates. Hey, love, let's go out and get some road gravel. Well, sure. I love my wife. She's amazing. She puts up with me and all this. All right, some innards. No, not my own. But this is the color of burgundy that I kind of wanted the cape to go into. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I masked off all the wolf wolf parts with some... Um, po I'm sorry. It's some... Um, and it's not coming to me. <laughs> Silly putty, putty, that's it. Some silly putty, and I shaped it that way so this way I could paint the cape. Okay, some scorching red, just to bring the highlights out on the cape. Uh, again, using um, the airbrush, you can do this with a brush, and it takes a lot of glazing and a heck of a lot of time, time that I didn't want to spend additionally to the time that I've already spent on this model. So, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to go overboard with it. Okay, so here it is. Uh, Red ink. That's right, some red ink just to really get the supreme highlights. And that I'm just going to tips of the cape and really bringing that out. So this way it has that gradient. And look how I'm pulling it through very lightly. Okay, just to bring up that color. I do like inks like that. Alrighty now, uh, I took the cape and I reversed it where I know the cape is under the silly putty and now I'm doing the fur and um, yup. Now essentially I didn't have to cover the last one with the silly putty in order to do this but you know what the heck, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> And um, I want to hit all areas, that's right, both sides, because you never know when the, the cape is going to show on the other side, so. Uh, and doing the same process that I did with all the fur that I do for the Fenris and Wolves and that I did with the last one, I'm just kind of repeating the process, but this time I'm doing it on the back. Uh, at first I wanted to go with a little bit of gray area so it could look a little different. Alright, I'm going to skip that part and go into some base. Okay, now I put some skulls in the base and now I'm going to prime it. Everything is all dry. I didn't I wait 24 hours for it to dry. I don't know if that's what I need. And for the caulking, I put a little bit of modeling paste on top. And you could put some wood putty or anything like that. It just covers in those holes and make it look like rock. All right, so micron pen time. That's right, now I wanted to do some kind of design. So just testing out design. This is what I do, I take a little pad and I try different designs and see if it'll work or not. There you go. And you know, I don't know. I mean, this is my first time trying to do this, like little design with the, with the, the pen. Now I don't look right, only because, you know, the diamond's not even, but there you go. I'm just trying to get a little edge thing. Yep. There you go, maybe two lines. Yeah, I'll see if that works out. I don't know, just playing around with some kind of design. Ultimately, what we're gonna do is go put this onto the cape. So let's see if that works. I don't know, eh, the bumps are a little a little much. Maybe I shouldn't have done the bumps, I don't know. But I did it anyway, I don't know, I was just playing around. And that's just it. There's no real wrong way to do this. I mean, you just, if you make mistakes, you, you don't like it later on, oh well, you know, the worst case scenario, uh, you can you can start over again and paint over it and keep going, but if you don't want to paint over it, oh, well, I, it's not like I don't have 20 billion models on my list to be able to, to paint. Um, if you ever take a look at me in the intro and the outros, you get to see how many models that I have, and that's not even all of it. There's there's so much more out of camera that it's, it's, it's shameful, actually. So if I do something wrong, I just move on to the next miniature, really, and that's 
how I do it. Okay, so there's the red cape, and I'm just putting a little design, that little design that I did over there, I'm just trying to replicate it. I'm just kind of looking at it and tracing it through. Now, it's not gonna be perfect because the cape is not flat, so that's okay if it's not really perfect. Uh, you just go once over. Now, I'm not lifting the pen up at all. I'm trying to just go straight right until I get to the tip, and that's when I lift it up on the highest part right there, and then just join. It's so much harder to start and then start than to go straight line. So you want to try to go straight line with it. Now that looks great, and I should have lifted at that, but I pushed it. All right, there it is. We're gonna have to mate the cape onto uh, the top, I guess, a wolf pelt, and see if everything lines up here. Come on. Okay, there you go. Uh, not aligned up. I'm gonna put. I drilled a hole in there. I, I painted the base. Uh, so I mean, it's, it's looking good. We're getting to the end portion. The end portion of this build. Uh, I drilled out the, the feet, and you could drill it with a hand drill, or you could. I do it with a Dremel tool. It worked out well for me, and that's what I have. Now this one, I put a little more brown. I'm doing serapon sepia with that base there. I do have a, a video about bases. You can check that out. Um, but yep, I want to put off some excess and I, I pin it with a um, regular nail that I cut off. When you're cutting nails off, you just use a heavy duty clippers. Don't use your hobby clippers for that. And I pre sink that hole with a regular nail before I sink it in the second time, or if not, it's going to start floating on you. You don't want that. And you just put it down and uh, hold it there because I don't want to put any kind of like super fast healing agent on it but then it's pinned down so it's it seems all right look at that look at that oh yeah that's all right mm -hmm. that's right it's done. Mm -hmm. i already pre-painted pre the base as well and i do have that charcoal and finally we've got to put the little dip on top i should have done it on the item and not on here i know better when it comes to oh boy there you go i'm gonna wisp out any kind of spidering that's going on should have known better by, the, by building scale models that you put it on the piece that's going to connect, not the piece that's going to connect to. Um, I don't know why. I guess you have more control with that. All right, taking off some poster tack from that tip and just putting it on the tip right here, right here, and it'll be done. Yes, that's right. Um, lengthy process, eh, it's a Terminator Captain, so I really went, you know, whole, whole with it to get through. I, I went on and tried to do put my best foot forward with this guy uh, so he can look pretty awesome. And I think he came out really well. Again, you can use any colors you want. It's up to you. I'm just showing you how I did it. Well, I hope you liked this tutorial and it's time for the final pictures. Later. Well, there you have it, the Space Wolf Terminator Captain all painted up. Uh, the freehand, I'm working on freehand to get better and better, and the better I get, the better content I produce for you guys, and it's all a learning process, it's all a journey. Never look at your miniatures and say, oh man, it's not good enough. Look at your miniatures and say, oh wow, look at this. There's something else I can improve on and get even better. <laughs> well, if you like this video and you found it inspirational, hit that like button share with others, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush. <music>